Hello everybody, welcome back to Olive Boy Pens. Today we're going to be doing another video in my series of comparing vintage pens to modern pens that are in some way connected by, you know, family lineage or whatever. So in today's video, we are going to be looking at the Schaefer Legacy uh, that just came out. Uh, there have been a couple Schaefer Legacies uh, throughout the years, but this is the 2021 version in the black herringbone finish. Uh, and we're going to be comparing it to the pen that it was based on, the Schaefer Pen for Men from the 1960s. Uh, it was first produced in 1959. These are a little bit later because uh, the first production models had the uh, palladium steel nibs. Um, but these are what the uh, the Schaefer Legacy is based on and that's what the name Legacy is actually referring to. It's referring to the legacy of the Schaefer Pen for Men. So I'm really excited to show you guys the difference between these two uh, just because Coming off my last Vintage versus Modern comparison, uh, the Parker 51 video, I'm hoping for something a little bit better, just to prove that maybe there's hope for all the brands trying to do modern remakes of older pens. So let's get this box open and get right into it. All right, so first things first, let's get this Schaefer Legacy out of the box. Uh, a nice thing that I noticed actually embarrassingly recently is that the uh, texture on the box matches the texture of the pen, which is kind of cool. Um, so here you've got the new, you know, modern Schaefer logo, uh, Schaefer Pen and Art Supply Co. You hate to see it. And pretty standard pen coffin, I'd say. Um, here is the pen. Uh, included in the box is a converter, which is in the pen right now, as well as some cartridges and a little warranty. Uh, very, you know, straightforward box. Um, not much to say about that. The inside's red. It's kind of fun. So we've got our legacy out on the table. Quite a good looking pen. And we've got our penses for menses our PFMs. Let's look at the originals first. So this is the Schaefer Pen for Men, first released in 1959. There are a couple of different versions of the Pen for Men that you might see around, uh, indicated by different numbers. So there's Pen for Men's 1 through, I believe, 8, and most commonly seen are 1 through 5. So the Pen for Men 1 is a solid plastic body with silver trim and a palladium steel nib. Pen for Men 2 has a silver cap and same palladium steel nib. Then the 3, which is this guy, plastic body, gold trim, and a gold nib inlaid like all the other ones. Of course, the same snap cap across all of them. And then the 4 is a stainless steel cap with a little gold tassie and gold trim, same nib. And then the five is very similar to the four, but it has a gold filled cap. These are fairly light pens. I weighed them in at 20 grams for the three and 24 grams for the four, and that's uninked. So they're really comfortable to write with, even though they are a fairly chunky size for a vintage pen. The filling mechanism is a really unique one, and it's kind of the main show on this pen, besides the nib, that is. And it is a snorkel filler. A snorkel filling pen is, you know, this is kind of the only brand that's ever done it, because it is one of the comp most complex filling systems ever put inside of a pen. The way you fill it is you unscrew or I guess twist open this piston knob at the back. And then you're going to get this little needle that comes out of the front. So that's under the feed. And that connects to a pneumatic sack filling system inside the back of the pen. So then you pull the piston knob back. Then you're gonna dip the 
snorkel into the ink so you never get ink on the grip which is pretty cool i think that's the main appeal of this design and then you press down it fills and you're good to go and then you just twist the snorkel away amazing so cool uh, i'll show you a little bit of the internals as well so you can unscrew this grip you have the little sack and sack protector plugs into the nib and feed these are keyed so it only fits in one way kind of hard to get it back in but yeah so you see there are these little tabs here that keep it from twisting around inside the pen then you get a spring and then the inside has similar if you're familiar with the shaper touchdown you would know how this works it just has an extra funky funky needle in it so that pretty much covers the features of the original Schaefer pen for men I didn't show you the filling mechanism on this one because uh, it actually is full so I don't want to shoot ink which is a thing that you could very much do on this pen one thing I'll note too is I uh, you know these are vintage pens this one came with a cracked blind cap so I've uh, three actually 3d printed a knob for the back and it's you know airtight so it works the tassie was intact so i was able to screw it back into the system just something i'm kind of proud of it's pretty cool now let's take a look at these pens successor the schaefer legacy there have been many legacies this is just the newest version for 2020 first thing i'll note is the body it is much much heavier than the other two it is 43 grams you know this is an all metal pen it weighs a ridiculous amount compared to those two but if you're used to heavy pens you know you probably wouldn't notice too much it's a pvd coated metal body similar uh, to me to the lamy emporium it's got a similar tactile feel especially with you with these nice herringbone etchings across the whole body and the nice you know shiny black trims it's a pretty slick looking pen another thing that's interesting is that the shape of the pen is slightly different so on a pfm the shape transfers from a square to the round at the end giving you these nice little offset cuts kind of whereas on a legacy it's round I'm sure that has something to do with, you know, how the pen was going to be constructed out of metal, and that might have just made things weird, but I mean, it looks fine on a pen from N4, so I don't know why they decided to go with that design change. I think the squared circle design is kind of iconic. Um, so, underneath the hood, we have got a very similar looking inlaid 18 karat gold this time nib. This is a uh, rhodium plated one. What's interesting about these is that these are actually made by Sailor. Schaefer, being primarily an art supply company at this point, doesn't have the capabilities of making their own nibs in house anymore. So they contract them out to different companies. They've been done by different people in the past. I believe they've been done by Yovo before, um, but I could be wrong on that. But this particular nib is made by Sailor, which was pretty exciting to me at first. And we'll get to why I'm not super excited about it now in a minute. The filling system is not a snorkel, as you might imagine. Not a very practical thing back in the day, and it isn't now. So, the very utilitarian Schaefer piston converter. It's of decent builds, I don't mind it. I have no qualms like I do with some other converters. If you've watched my channel for long enough, you know I have beef with sailor converters and pilot converters and yeah. One thing that I wasn't expecting to complain about with this pen is the barrel. And you'd say, well, oh boy, what's the deal? It's just a barrel. Well, if you listen carefully, It rattles. I've diagnosed this problem to be a loose piece of 
barrel metal, I don't really know what it's for, in the bottom. I can't get it out, I can't make it stop rattling, and it's going to bother me until the day that I die. Slash return this pen to Mike. You can still hear it when the pen's inked. Or closed, I mean. It makes the super solid and classy feeling pen seem cheap, which is a huge bummer. You hate to see it. And uh, I have some more complaints about this pen, but uh, we will get to those as soon as I start writing with it. So let's get into the writing sample. I actually remembered I need to fill up the PFM3, so I might as well show you guys on camera. Normally I'd say don't use Japanese inks in a vintage pen, but Pilot Blue is a very well-behaved ink, and these pens both have silicon sacs. So, it's not a problem. So, just unscrew the snorkel. Open your bottle. Open the touchdown. And then you're just going to dip. And you're good to go. It's as simple as that. Look at that. No ink even on the nib, which is very cool to me. Uh, you know, maybe I should make sure that the four is also topped off. One thing about silicon sacs is, you know, you can use different inks, which is great. But they're more prone to leaking when they get to lower temperatures because they are, they let in more uh, air just very slightly more than a latex sack. So they, they dry out a little bit easier. It's worth it for me because these don't have a particularly big ink capacity, but if that's something that bothers you, take note of it. Okay, so we're gonna start with the PFM3, which has a 14 karat gold fine slash extra fine nib, and it's one of my favorites. So let's get going here. I find Schaefer's inlaid nibs, the early ones anyway, to be really, really pleasant. They have a slight upturn at the tip, which it's kind of hard to tell, but it really does make a difference. And they have a little bit of feedback, just enough to remind you that you're writing. And boy, I just, I can't get enough of them. On every Schaefer pen that I've tried... Uh, you know, I've got some Imperials, I've got some Compacts, which all have this, you know, style of inlaid nib. I find them one of the most pleasant to look at and to write with in my collection. Really nothing to complain about. Now for the 4. The 4 is going to be the more direct comparison because it is also a medium nib like the Legacy. So, let's get into it. PFM4, medium, honestly medium broad, especially by vintage standards. This is a pretty special pen for men nib in that it's very juicy and wet. Normally find these in the you know more common fine or extra fine. Um, the, the needle points are about as rare as the broad nibs, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, this one is very juicy and wet and lovely. Um, these even have a little bit of bounce to them, which you wouldn't expect necessarily because they're inlaid into the body of the pen. But they do have, not flex, not really even softness, just like a little bit of cushioning, a little bit of give. And I appreciate them for it. This one's super smooth. You might not get that impression from the sound of the paper, but that's just Midori cotton being Midori cotton. So, how does the modern sailor-made legacy nib stand up? Pop off the cap. So, 
Schaefer Legacy 2020. This nib is unpleasant, and I didn't know why at first, because by all means, it should not be unpleasant. It is made by Sailor. It is an inlaid nib. It is quite a good-looking nib. And then I looked at it under a loop, and I noticed some problems, and I will show you the pictures now. This pen has terrible baby's bottom, which for those of you <laughs> uninitiated into this addiction means that it's over polished and you, you get an effect on the nib, you know, if you're looking at it from the front, that looks like somewhat like that. So ink has trouble flowing out of the capillary action when it's making contact with the paper. And uh, this is a terrible, I'm sorry for having drawn this. <laughs> Basically, it makes the pen write bad. And another issue that this nib has is it's cut off center, which is bonkers to me on a almost $400 pen to have a nib be cut off center. When, when I say off center, we're going to do another unfortunate drawing here. It means one of the tines has bigger tipping than the other, and that'll be more apparent in the picture. But that just means that no matter how much you tune this, no matter how much you regrind it, smooth it, whatever, it's always going to write unpleasantly. So the only thing you could do is, like, send this back. Or, I mean, I don't know, I could be wrong. Maybe you could grind this side down to be, but then it would look uneven. It's just, it's really unfortunate. And for a $400 pen, I would say more than unfortunate, I'd say unacceptable. The pen for men nibs are perfect. And, you know, you can tell they're a product of their time in that, people would be depending on these a lot more as tools, even for an expensive pen at the time like this, more than this, which is kind of just like a luxury item or an art supply, <laughs> if you want to call it that, Schaefer. So even, you know, these are not cheap pens. I paid 220 for this one, and I got lucky with this one. Um, I got I got lucky with this one. I paid about 120 Um and got it restored, and, you know, I had to reprint a piece, but still, I mean, you know, about half, these together cost me the same as this would at retail. So, what would you rather have? And, yeah, so that's, that pretty much covers all of the things I can show you and tell you about these pens. Let's go over to my final thoughts on the Legacy versus Pen for Men debacle. So, let's answer my question, or I guess the thesis of this video. Can a vintage pen be remade by a modern version of its brand? And, you know, does does the Schaefer legacy live up to its name, the legacy of the pen for men? This particular one? No. But that's because of some, I hope, specific to this pen quality control issues, which that's an entirely different problem just because this is a very expensive pen. Some of the stuff about the Parker 51 is excusable just because it's $80, which is still like so much for that pen. But this is a lot more. And the quality control issues that are apparent in it really are unacceptable. Uh, I mean, having a nib cut so far off center and just not writing well, and then having some part of the internals of the body seemingly just have fallen apart and be rattling around inside of the body is totally unacceptable. If this was a solid writer's pen with a cartridge converter filler that didn't rattle around, I could see myself recommending it. I mean, the Schaefer Legacy is a classic in its own right just because it's been made for a while now and they're solid they, they've done a whole run of beautiful materials and different versions that have all been known to write well and kind of have their own cult following uh, because you know some people don't want to have to deal with a snorkel filler I will be sticking with my pens for men's pen pen for men's pens for men Schaefer pens <laughs> Schaefer PFMs. I will be sticking with my Schaefer PFMs just because 
I think the novelty of the snorkel filler is amazing, first of all. Second of all, I think the light lightweight is better for me. And, of course, I mean, as you can tell, the nibs are, you know, leaps and bounds better. Which surprised me, because as soon as I saw that this inlaid 18 karat gold nib was being made by Sailor, I was like, oh, sick, this actually has some promise. Because I know Schaefer is a shell of what it was once, what... I know that Schaefer is now a shell of what it once was. You can tell that because it calls itself Schaefer Pen and Art Supply Co. But they're trying, you know, they're trying to get around that and and connect back to that legacy. And in this specific isolated incident, I think they failed. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you have a Schaefer Legacy 2021 or earlier, I'd love to hear what you think of it, especially if you've tried out a Schaefer Pen for Men. In addition to that, I would love to hear other suggestions you guys have for different pens to compare. I have a couple of ideas knocking around. I'm thinking maybe comparing my vintage Aurora 88 to a modern one if I can get my hands on one. I think that would be a really interesting video. In addition to that, Maybe some more pilot caplices on the way. I, I might have that uh might have that connection sorted out soon. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this addition to I guess what's now becoming a series in the uh, vintage versus modern comparison series. Yeah. Anyway, uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed. Uh, please subscribe if you want to see more. Especially, it always you know gets me going to see people enjoying my videos. And, uh, yeah.